Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to iTouch App Reviewers. In this video, we're gonna do something a little bit differently. First off, I recognize how quickly this channel is growing and I wanna thank each and every one of you for watching uh, and supporting the channel, especially those of you who are loyal viewers. I know there's quite a few of you in the comments that comment on like every video and I do appreciate that. So in order to kind of branch out a little bit, I'm gonna start incorporating some other news, some tech news, stuff that you will be interested in um, but not just Apple news because like right now there's no Apple news, but I still want to give you guys good content because there's so much more going on in the tech world. And I know a lot of you guys watch this channel because you know, it's no bullshit. It's straight to the point. I give you guys the articles and the information that you need, and then you can do with it what you want. I'll throw in my opinion here and there, but I think a lot of you guys watch this channel because it's like I said, no bullshit. So it makes it a little bit different from the other tech YouTubers out there. So anyways, without further ado, let's get right into this. First story here, Google is using your Gmail account to track your purchases. So you probably did not know about this. And this is something that I didn't know about either. I didn't know uh, Google was actually doing this. I don't use Gmail personally for uh, personal stuff. But if you do, you might want to know about this. So basically what's happening is Gmail goes through your emails and finds your receipts and then puts them all into a spot under this URL, myaccount.google.com slash purchases. And you guys can go through all of that stuff. Now that might seem kind of cool on the surface, like, yo, I can go through this. But first of all, when are you ever going to need this? And second of all, let's sink in for a minute. That's creepy as hell. The fact that Google has all of your receipts stored right here. And now they claim that it's just you, you know, only you can see your purchases. Uh, blah, blah, blah. But technically anyone could see this if they logged into your account or like, you know, if it, God forbid, got hacked or if your significant other goes snooping, see what you've been doing, just creepy stuff like that. It, this is something that's really not necessary in my opinion. And the worst part of it is apparently it's a pain in the ass to delete. I can't actually test this on my account because I don't have anything. Anyways, it's just kind of a pain in the ass. And this is Google for you. I mean, they track everything. That's what they're in business for. Uh, but just be advised of this. If you guys want, go check this and delete anything you don't want in there. If you guys didn't know about it, you guys know I'm looking out for you. All right. So next up, Google pulls Huawei's Android license, forcing it to use open source version. So this is actually a really big deal. And this news just broke a couple hours ago. If you guys didn't know, Huawei is basically China's version of Apple, in my opinion. It's just a huge brand new company that is selling tons of phones. Way more Huawei phones are being sold in China than iPhones. Uh, like the percentages are just ridiculous. And honestly, they make pretty good phones for the price, in my opinion. I haven't used any personally, but the reviews are great. Now, if you want one in the US, it costs a little bit of extra and the import fees, but I'm pretty sure they're either getting banned in the US or have been banned. Trump's administration has been trying to block Huawei uh, because they believe that Huawei phones are actually Chinese government spying on Americans. And if you think about it, that's a really good way to do it. You know, if you're the Chinese government and you want to spy on American networks, what do you do? Well, you get some really cheap, decent phones into the market, into the hands of these users, and they all go using it, connecting to networks here in the US. You know, you got T-Mobile, Sprint, Verizon, and then you got all the Wi-Fi networks. I mean, these could be a backdoor into Chinese government if they wanted to. So for now, Google has cut off Huawei's Android license completely. So Huawei is now restricted to using Android open source project, AOSP, cutting the company off from critical Google apps and services that consumers outside of China expect on Android devices. This also means Huawei will only be able to push security updates for Android once they're made available in AOSP, assuming the company uses its own update system. So this is kind of crazy. This is an unprecedented move. Um, not entirely sure why Google did this, uh, like just now it's kind of random it seems, uh, but as things get more heated between China and the US, especially with trade, uh, you guys can expect uh, this is probably going to go down pretty badly for Huawei, at least in the American market. I think they're going to be or stay completely banned here. I think they're going to kind of die a slow death here in the US, or actually I should say pretty quick death because there's not many people using Huawei's, but I think in China, obviously they'll continue to thrive because that's just the way it is over there. So let me know what you guys think about this. I'm actually, I actually kind of like it because me personally, I do think that Huawei easily could be using that to spy on Americans. And uh, that's definitely not something we want. Now, lastly, this is probably the biggest story here. I know this video is kind of long. I'm going to try to cut it down a little bit as much as possible, but these are some actually pretty juicy stories. So Apple is developing radical new iPhone touch ID upgrade. Now, if you guys have been following the channel for a while, I had mentioned that Apple was producing these patents, or at least trying to get these patents signed uh, for different Touch ID variations. And this was after the iPhone 10 release. So everyone was like, hold up, why in the world would Apple be revisiting Touch ID after they pretty much ditched it 
and went full in on Face ID. In fact, at the Apple events, they even said, we're doubling down on Face ID and pretty much cutting out Touch ID. Well, they didn't say that last part, but that's what it's implied. So now many of you guys are probably gonna like this. Uh, personally, I like the option of both. Let's just say that. I think Face ID is great. Touch ID was also awesome. So it's a win-win for consumers. Apple has quietly filed a patent which reveals its ambitious plans to bring Touch ID back to iPhones. And it works in a way unlike anything iPhone owners have experienced before. Apple has detailed how it will build Touch ID into the display of new iPhones by installing an array of pinhole cameras under the screen. Unlike rivals, however, Apple's patent shows a touch area which fills the screen allowing users to place a finger anywhere to unlock their device. Let me reread that. Apple's patent shows a touch area which fills the screen allowing users to place a finger anywhere to unlock their device. That is awesome. That is a breakthrough right there. Because right now, all the phones that are out, you have to put your thumb in a very particular spot. And if you miss it, it's just a pain in the ass. Many reviewers have noted how they hate how small that little zone is on the screen to put their thumb and they have no idea where it is because there's no texture. On the old Touch ID phones, you know, it was the home button, you could feel it. But if it's just on the screen, you wouldn't know. In addition to this, the tech is clearly taking shape since Apple has included photographs of a working prototype. The furthest step yet for a technology, the company is clearly accelerating with no less than four in-display Touch ID patent filing since December, including how user fingerprints will not only be mapped, but 3D modeled. So this is where it gets a little creepy. This story was, uh, when was this? May 16th, sometime last week. I don't know which day it was. I was driving into work and I was thinking about this. I was like, hmm, if Apple ever put Touch ID back into their phones, I have to do something radical to have it anywhere on the screen. And it led me down this little rabbit hole in my mind where let's just say law enforcement wanted to prove you were using your phone at a certain time. Like they could literally have anywhere on the screen that you tapped, like they could, kind of have your fingerprint information. This isn't totally true since this mentioned that th these are cameras that have to you know, turn on at a specific time. They wouldn't always be on, I don't think, but just kind of made me think about that. That was probably the same day, probably May 16th. But anyways, here is a picture that Apple filed of, I guess the patent and a working prototype of it actually scanning this fingerprint. And I guess they want 3D modeled fingerprints, which would be crazy. And here's a little diagram. Now here they mentioned that even Face ID's biggest fans should be excited. Firstly, the all new Touch ID is not designed to replace Face ID, but to augment it, giving users both an alternative unlock option as well as a military grade security by combining both in hypersensitive situations. So in theory here, you could choose, hey, I want Face ID or not. Uh, I don't want that. I just want Touch ID basically anywhere on the screen. Or you could say, you know what? Nah, I want both of them for extra security where it has to scan my face and have my fingerprint, you know, to get into the phone, which is a bit overkill in my opinion, but I think that would be a great option to have, especially if you can kind of narrow it down. If iOS 13 had some sort of cool feature where you could lock down apps and maybe some of them use fingerprints, some of them use face ID, that would be kind of cool. That's just speculation though. These are actual patents, so this actually could happen. Apple is thinking bigger, already having filed plans for iPhones to replace your passport, and that's where dual biometrics are crucial. So if Apple does this and decides to house your passport somehow in your phone, by the way, which would be pretty cool, let's be honest here, you would need really, really good biometrics on your phone. Dual would be great, you know, fingerprint plus face ID would be ideal. So maybe that's what they're going for here. Now this is not coming this year as they note, but I mean, I could tell you that uh, this is coming possibly in the 2020 redesign. You guys just picked up the 10s or 10s Max. Honestly, this year's iPhones, you could sit out. Honestly, even I could, and I have the iPhone 10. I think I'll be getting this year's iPhones as well as next year's. So the 2020 redesign is looking really, really good at this point. I'm super excited to you know give it a try once it comes out, uh, but let me know your thoughts on this down below. That's all I got for this video, guys. If you liked it, hit it with a big thumbs up and subscribe. Drop your comments down below on your thoughts, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.